Welcome back to my channel. This is Kendra, the Divine Purpose Mentor. And I don't exactly know what to call this video, but there's going to be a lot of information and basically a come to Jesus moment with you all. So I received an email from one of you, lovely viewers that has been following me for a couple of years. And I don't have the email in front of me, so I'm not going to read it verbatim, but it was along the lines of, Kendra, you are a seer with the gift of prophecy, and here we are at this point with this pandemic, and I need to hear more from you. Can you please go into why we as a collective group manifested something like this and also what what it was calling our attention to and what is the potentials to come so over the last year the message from the universe that i've been getting is that i need to, like, people keep asking me, like, what is it exactly that you do? And that question really frustrates me because I'm like, I don't know what I do. I just do these things and it helps people and I witness that. And so, like, just let me do my thing and then you'll see it and then you'll be able to tell me what it is that I do. It's so hard for us to see ourselves. We live on a universe that is governed by law of attraction and we live in a mere hologram. Everything that we are experiencing in our outside reflection is a reflection of something that is unseen to us. And it's important for us to look at these mirrors and to see what it's trying to tell us and to stop to think, stop thinking that there's something against us. You know, it's really easy when we are going through something that causes us pain to look at who the problem is. But it's not who the problem is. It's what is the problem. And we are all a part of that creation of that problem. So I, like the rest of you, resist those mirrors at times and it took me having to go to a few sessions with one of my mentors and hearing that <laughs> hearing my own advice come out of their mouth that this is all lessons and tests and what is it teaching me so when I received that email, I went into my own self-doubt and fear because I, <laughs> yes, am a seer and I can look in any direction or in any potential, any frequency and see the path clearly. That is my gift. I know the vibration of truth. That is what I came here to teach all of you. But if I am stuck in my human perspective, afraid to look because of what I might find, then we're all flying blind. So I went in and I recorded my last video in front of the camera. And when I watched it back with editing, and I watched it a couple of times back because I was studying myself since... I obviously am getting pushback from the universe for somebody to just come and tell me what it is that I do because they're not supposed to. I know who I am. I know what I can do. But it was my own resistance to looking to see myself clearly so that I can explain it in a way that makes me more accessible to people because of that fear that I still hold on to. It's like we all have different points of perspective and aspects within us. And when I started this channel, I 
never thought that I wouldn't be heard. I've always known that I have a role in this global shift and I have a role that it's going to need to be on a platform in order to be heard. And that isn't to say that that has been something that I've wanted in my human experience because there's that fear of being seen and I've become a master of making myself invisible in a crowded room. But I digress. Long story short, I watched this video back and studied myself to see that what people see when they sit in front of me, when I'm doing a reading for them, or when I'm healing, doing healing with them, they always ask me, what are you reading? What are you looking at? Because I rarely look directly into someone's eyes unless I'm releasing them from trauma. I'm reading the frequencies around you. There's all of these different potentials and stories and connections and yeah, things that we don't even have human words for. And it's easy for me to look and, and see. So I, even in that video, had resistance to see what the mass fear was with this whole pandemic. Even though I was sitting in my own level of fear. So I went in and I looked at why we manifested it. And I recorded everything that I found. And the message was very choppy. And it was full of, I don't even know what, but it wasn't complete. It didn't feel like something that I could put out there for all of you because I would feel that I was leaving you guys with awareness of a problem and then walking away from you. And that's, yeah, awareness of a problem is a problem half solved but we're all in this together. And instead of going to look for the, the full circle, I allowed it to come. That's how I like to work. I like to allow the information. I don't like to try and pull at the information, but I can travel and journey into the information. But a lot of the times when we're dealing with other people's decisions on what potential path they're going to choose that sets off like a dominoes effect so there is you know hundreds of thousands of potentials in just you know our government <laughs> for instance and it takes them getting on board with one direction of potentials for me to see what is to come. Like most of you, I did not choose an easy life path. I chose to experience every point of polarity with the most significant amount of trauma and walk as far as I could into the darkness and God gave me my choice point when it was no longer allowed for me to travel down that path of darkness, that it was time for me to either live my purpose and step into alignment and share my gifts with the world or my time here on this planet would be over because I would have no room to expand and I chose to step in to my path. And so when I started this YouTube channel, I kind of had this false sense of reality that I was going to put out a video, a couple of videos, and it was just going to go viral, and it was just going to be like, whew, everything was just going to... But the universe is always teaching me, and I wasn't aware of my own resistance and fear of being seen. And so... 
I was a little, well, I was disappointed and I had to come up with a process of how I could do these videos without attachment. So I have this rule and process for myself that when I put out a video, I wake up every single day and I ask, what would you have me do? And I feel the collective vibration and I can feel an asking and I can feel a calling and I can feel the energy coming and I put out a video and then I release it and I ask for it to find whoever it is supposed to find. And then I receive a comment or an email or a message in some way from somebody saying, thank you, or I needed to hear that, or I felt that message was for me, just something. If I can help one person, then I know that that is the person that was calling me to put out that information, and my job is done, and I release it. That is a way I don't get so wrapped up in consumed by social media and doing YouTube videos, but it's easy to fall into. And so I became eventually really happy that my channel has grown slow and steady because I have a lot of people around me that kept warning me about how vicious people are on, are on YouTube and how I can't say certain things that I just say because people are going to attack me for it. And so I came in ready to be confronted and attacked. And then I was shown that you all were so loving and welcoming and grateful and wanting the information. I mean, I've literally, I've only gotten probably three hateful comments since I've started my YouTube channel. And that makes me feel internally grateful and lucky. And it allows me to see that the universe is supporting me and that I'm exactly where I need to be. So now I will explain why we are all exactly where we need to be. The reason why we collectively manifested this virus, this pandemic, is because we have been getting messages from the universe to do something different. The way we treat our animals and the way we treat people in other countries and the way we treat our earth, how we feel so entitled to take ownership of the land that the earth that is so gracefully allowing us to share space with her. We've all seen the pollution and the plastic polluting our oceans and the wildlife that are being so incredibly abused and sold at the Chinese market and how we are factory farming our animals and the ways we go about creating products for the masses, taking shortcuts that are ultimately creating cancer and other Ill illnesses. Cancer is the leading cause of death now on our planet. And it's because of the way that we are going about producing in order for In order for a profit and convenience, 
we've been getting subtle hints and we've all been asking for a change in some way. We've either been asking for a change or been too asleep to see that a change is needed. But collectively, we have been asking. And when you don't take steps to go in the opposite direction, when you are walking in the darkness, eventually the universe starts to speak very loudly and close doors. This virus is a complete mere reflection to the repercussions that will inevitably come when we mistreat our animals and our planet. It is a, a symbol of the pollution being a reflection of not being able to breathe with this virus. And the lockdown being a reflection of how we're locking up our animals in zoos and producing animals just so that we can eat meat and then pumping them full of steroids and other chemicals that are creating infertility and lots of other things. And then when people are getting sick, how the majority of people don't die from the illness itself. They die from not being able to afford medical assistance. And so this pause and reflection is calling for unity consciousness, for one. That is why we are all globally talking about the same thing at this present moment. And as a collective, the public hasn't felt cared for or valuable to our government. And that stems from the dysfunction that we have in every family that exists on this planet right now. There is some level of dysfunction. And so... This is giving us a moment to see that those needs that once were not met in our childhood are being met. That is why our government is coming together in unity. It took a global pandemic to get all of the world leaders in the same room and on the same page, and on the same team. Because for once, they aren't fighting each other. They're fighting this virus. This point is a time of reflection for us all to take our own responsibility for our own part, and to also take responsibility for each other, to capitalize on each other's best interest. And that isn't to take all of the burdens of another person and be a self-sacrificer. It isn't to, it's to balance the scales is what I'm hearing. If I could give you one piece of advice. I would invite you all to look in your own lives. What could you do to change something over the next 14 days? What is one thing each day that you could change in your life, a small way that you could add to the greater whole? Like today, I went to throw away a bottle of uh, spaghetti was in, spaghetti sauce. 
and I went to just throw it away. Even though I know that I should be recycling, we don't have recycling here in Montana. And instead of going and protesting and making noise and making that happen, I thought, oh, that's not my job. Even though it weighs on me, even though I think about it, I'm not doing anything to change it. So I washed out that jar and I put it aside and I will take it down to the recycling once I have more and once I'm not locked down in my house. The reason why I'm urging you all to make these changes is because right now in the potentials, we can take the help that the government is giving us and we can, or if we have more to give, we can help out our neighbors that are less fortunate or we can look at the government and our leaders as our saviors, our rescuers, and when they stop giving, become jaded. Or because you had more to begin with and you're not getting help, you could become jaded. So there's always two points of polarity, and I urge you to see the beauty I understand if you have been, if you felt like an outcast, if you felt like a misfit toy your entire life because you are a starseed and you came here with a higher level of consciousness that you came to anchor into this planet and share your perspective. And instead, we came into this world and we were hurt by it because people didn't understand us and we felt alone and we isolated and we became rebels and we raged against and we wouldn't conform. And now it's like you go so far in that direction of rebelling against, you don't even know who you are. It's time to release that. You don't have to go follow the sheep. You don't have to allow somebody to tell you what your truth is. You don't have to give your power away. But you can start to see how we are all in this together. We all created this and we've all been asking for this. And by far the majority of us came here for this moment in time that we are experiencing right now. This is just the beginning. I have been telling you guys for the last three years, and maybe you haven't understood my urgency before, when I say the time is now. Stand together now. Maybe I need to be more specific in what I mean by that. Standing together is doing what we're doing, making these changes. This is allowing for us to see because it's one thing when you are isolating and not connecting with people out of your own choice, but when it's taken away from you to be able to go outside, it's amazing how we are all connecting. Well, a lot of us, I just did a Zoom call the other night and invited any, any of my viewers to come and join me. And it was a beautiful experience because there's so many of you that I've felt and I've connected with in the comments, but I haven't seen your face. And to see your face makes you my friend, makes me have something tangible that I can see, that I can witness, that I can connect with. We can all respect each other's perspective and opinion but one of the reasons, other than the fact that I was creating that, I don't even know what to call it, that meditation binary beat all day yesterday, and I 
ran out of time to do another Zoom call, but I did have resistance because I felt that with, I felt a pushback from one of the people that were on the call and I felt like a jerk for the way I responded. But I wasn't saying my truth out of ignorance or out of arrogance. When I, when you come and you're on something like a Zoom call live on my channel and you start going into talking about things that are not true. I have to stop you because one of the things I came here to do was to clear the clutter. It is not that I think that I know. It is that I know the vibration of truth. That is something that I know. I can show you. It vibrates through my body. I get goosebumps every single time the vibration of truth is received. So when you go into propaganda and things that aren't true, I have to stop you. But that isn't me saying that I don't value your perspective. I'm saying that I can't endorse the confusion because I will never put out illusions on my channel or feed the confusion and the fear. That is not what I came here to do. And because I'm very clear on that, I have to be very stern. And so while I desire to connect with all of you, I need to step forward and say, if I stop you while you're going down a rabbit hole, it is because I love you. It is because it is my purpose to say, hey, that's actually not true, so you actually don't even need to fear that. You actually don't even need to go into that because that's actually not true. Because it vibrates at a lie. Another thing I need to say is that I don't make these YouTube videos for me. Trust me, I wouldn't spend 12 hours making something for myself. It's just not... It's just not in my character. I make these videos for you. And when I'm guided to do something like I was yesterday, literally guided by Jesus, and he didn't channel through me, he actually sat next to me. And he showed me how to make binary beats. And he put my singing bowl in my hand and he told me to play it from my heart space, allowing the vibrations to be up against my heart and to verberate out. And then he did the same thing with the ham drum and the rain stick. And then he showed me what frequencies, what binary beats to pick for the left and the right and to put together the elements with the chorus of animals and the crackling fire and the the bush that was crackling in the fire and the wind and the ocean and the rain. He had me create this for all of you. And I listened to it back after I uploaded it and I got really upset with myself because it's supposed to be listened to with headphones and without the headphones, the sound was all off. It didn't sound like that when before I uploaded it to YouTube, so I don't know why it sounded like that. But I just wanted to let you guys know my process because when I think I keep a lot of this stuff to myself and then I get jaded because no one really understands what I'm doing or how I'm showing up for all of you and what my intention is. And that it's not about me. It really isn't. The things that I do for me is I am a, I love to DJ and I love to make beats. But when I'm making beats, 
I'm pressing buttons on a loop machine and uh, or I'm using my turntables and it takes me minutes because it's all digital. What I did yesterday was something that I've never done. I've never even thought to use real instruments in a meditation. And so I was guided by Jesus and I always fear speaking my entire truth because I fear that people think that I'm crazy or they won't believe me or they will challenge it in some way or they won't understand and they will push me away or they will put me up on a pedestal and that's not what I came here to do. So there's that, you know, push pull that we all have inside of us. And so this moment of reflection is to really become conscious of that push and pull within you. How are you holding yourself back? Because yes, we are quick to point the fingers and say that somebody else is doing something to us or some, the government's holding us back or this is against us because we're not manifesting the life that we dream of and everything that we want in our reality. But I assure you, it's never any of that other stuff. It's just that we end up manifesting people and circumstances into our lives because we're already doing that inside and we can't see ourselves clearly. And so we manifest a mirror reflection of what we hold inside so that we can see clearly what we are not seeing. If you take everything in this life as a clear map of exactly what you need to know that you don't understand inside of yourself, all it's about is getting to know yourself because when you know yourself and you see yourself clearly, you understand the world around you because it's all a part of your creation. And I'm feeling an exhalation, which means that this is my acknowledgement from the universe inside of myself that this message is completed. I hope that this message finds you well. I love you all so very much. Know that I am here to support you. If you guys want to get on a call or you have some way that I can support you, I'm here. I'm not going to be doing anything for 14 days. So you guys can email me at info at KendraDivinePurposeMentor.com or you can check out my website, KendraDivinePurposeMentor.com. And I definitely would love to still jump on Zoom calls with any of my viewers and connect. I would just like to set the intention before we do the next one, whether everybody on the call is in harmony with a similar mission and purpose, or if everyone is needing guidance, or if people are just wanting to connect, then I will be able to navigate and direct it a little bit better, more cohesively. So if you guys could help me out in that way, I do desire to connect with all of you. I love you. You are me. I am you. We're all in this together. Have a good day.